welcome you all. This is our second in the series of Life Palette. Last week we started a series and we started by talking about values. Um, the whole concept of this series is the fact that God wants to create a masterpiece on the canvas of your life. But the palette he works with is up to you. So we talked last week a little bit about, about values. If you were here, even uh, we have a painter with us and uh, I, I helped him on his canvas a little. Did you all see me paint the really black value? Yeah, okay, so it messed you up a little bit there. So, you know, you may not be an artist, that's okay, but just the illustration there of values make a difference. And in our lives, we talked about last week Jesus uh, giving us the one value that's key. Jesus said uh, in Matthew six thirty three, Seek first the kingdom of God, and all the other things will be added unto you. If we get that right, seek him first. He talked to, to Mary and Martha, to Martha. This one thing is necessary. The rest of life, it's not. But if we get that one thing, then we get our value set. The one value of seeking God's kingdom first. And today, I want to take it a little, a step further in life palette. And let's talk about the attitude that we have on our life palette that we give God to work with. Anybody have a bad attitude this week at all besides me? Yeah, this is a tough thing I hate about speaking is it seems like I experience everything I'm getting ready to talk about. You know, it's God's way. It just keeps me humble. Uh, That's why there are some things I'll just never talk about because it's like I don't want to go through it. You know what I mean? I want to welcome our other campuses. I want you guys to join with me. We're going to start by reading Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 out loud. This is our key verse for this uh, entire series. This is where God talks about how he wants us and he's created us to be a masterpiece. Let's read it together. Continental Ranch, join us. We are God's masterpiece. He's created created us anew anew in Christ Christ Jesus. Jesus. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Everybody say it again. I'm a masterpiece. And I realize some of you are saying, yeah, but my life doesn't look like a masterpiece. Well, one of the things that may keep us from being the masterpiece that God wants us to be is our attitude. In art, it's called perspective. Attitude gives us perspective in life. So we're going to spend a few minutes looking at that. And we want to look at Jesus as our model. What was his attitude and how do we take on his attitude. Now I have a question for you. Several of you have already started responding through Twitter and Facebook. You guys can give me some feedback. Would you name somebody that you admire? Take out your phones. You can text me. Name somebody you admire and what, it, what is it about them that you admire? On our internet campus, you guys can just type it into the chat room there and our guys will make sure I get it. Phil, would you join me again? This is Phil Stark. Let's welcome him back up here. He's an artist. Phil is a very good artist, and man, I had so much fun messing up your paintings last yeah, week. Yeah, I could tell. Uh, yeah, it was great. I'm not going to do it this week, though, unless you guys want me to paint. Yeah, see, there's some, there's some sickos out there. They're like me, and they go, ah, yeah, mess it up. I dig it. So, Phil, we're going to talk about perspective today, and, and I'm talking about how our attitude gives us perspective in life. In art, there are two different kinds of perspective. We're not giving art lesson. I could care less what they are. But talk to us a little bit about why perspective is important in art and what does it mean? What's, what's that even mean for you? Well, the perspective in painting Turn means... Your mic on. I think I did. Okay. Is it all right? No? Amateurs. What can I Nobody say? Nobody can hear? Is he okay? Am I good? It's on. <laughs> Isn't it? You're good. He's good. Am I? Okay. Well, anyway, uh, perspective in painting is um, making things on your painting go back in the distance that need to recede and stay back in the background. Um, And things that are bigger, more important in the painting come forward and are bigger and darker. So I have a tree here, kind of in the middle ground. If I put that same size tree way back in the distance, it's going to be way too big. So I have to reduce it, make it smaller push it back, and that's the perspective of things going back into the distance. And as it comes forward, it gets bigger. So it's about so. perspective. Is you're pushing the right things to the back and getting the right things to the front. Right, things that are, need to be up front or bigger. And I'm going to talk about important. attitude, how the right attitudes push the right things, Christ's attitude push the right things to the back and the right things forward. How many of you would like me to paint that tree from the front and the back for him? <laughs> You guys, man, just, I can't believe how everybody switched to his side all of a sudden. One week. I've been here 20 years. You guys are sick. Talk about faithful friends. So now one of the key things, and even with perspective, I, I want to make sure that we get this, Phil, because you're building on correct values. Because it, it doesn't matter how great a composition you have with perspective, 
you don't have the right values, doesn't matter, right? Right. Yeah, values are still the You're pretty happy with your it. values from last week? Yeah, pretty much. Come on, did you take it home and cheat? A little week? bit, yeah. <laughs> That's There's okay, always... you're painting in front of all of us, so we'll give you some mercy, right guys? Mercy, grace. Uh, yeah, see, I, I teased him last week that it looked like a kid painted it, and so he had to take it home and get caught up. <laughs> Right? That's right. <laughs> so it's this will be fun. So he's going to be working on perspective. And I want to talk to you now about attitude and how that gives us perspective in life. In your notes, I put this. Attitude determines direction and success in your life. You may say, well, man, I, I've got just as much talent and everything as everybody around me, but I'm not getting anywhere. It may be your attitude. Your attitude gives you direction and perspective. I, uh, we have a... Uh, golden retriever in our house uh, he kind of runs the house when he's around you know um, but our, our last golden this this one's a pup his name's Hubble some of you were introduced to him a few weeks ago he, he made an appearance up here with me uh, but our, our last golden we had to put down three years ago his name was was Prince now Prince would always go to the bathroom in the same place in the yard I wish Hubble would do that I can't get him to do it it's like you got to search everywhere well he always did it He always went to the bathroom under this orange tree we have. Now, when family would come from out of town, you know, they come from places where you don't have citrus trees and everything. So they're like, wow, you have orange trees. Well, I'm telling you, I think the oranges taste like the dog stuff. (laughs) You you know what I mean? And I'm a farm kid, grew up on a farm in Ohio, so it makes sense to me. He's going right there, it's going down, it's coming up. And so our family, they're always like, can we have your oranges? I'm like, yep, we don't eat them. (laughs) <laughs> go for it and then as they're eating I'm like does that taste okay to you oh this is great I'm good <laughs> I won't eat them so one day I'm out in the yard and 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 I'm out walking we have grass out there but this is where he always goes and I came back in the house I was in my bare feet it was the summertime and just kind of enjoying the grass and pretty soon I'm in the house I'm watching tv and I'm like Kathy oh, man we need to take the trash out something stinks in here you know and so I'm taking the trash out and then I'm blaming, I'm like, something's in the kitchen, honey. We need to clean the kitchen. It stinks in here. A little later on, she says, Jeff, there's nothing. I don't even smell it, you know. And a little later on, I'm in my bedroom. I'm working out later that night and doing some sit-ups. And I'm like, Kathy, it's in our bedroom. It stinks. And, you know, I got, I've got the whole family smelling around the house. You know, looking for the smell. And finally, Kathy comes over and says, it's you. <laughs> it's your feet. And then we realize it's because I'm out walking where the dog goes to the bathroom. It's on my feet. I'm just, that's the way our attitude is. It's us. We take it with us. We think the whole world stinks, but it's me. Attitude determines direction and success. You're carrying it with you. This is important for us. Because so many times we're thinking, oh, why do they always get the breaks? I'm just, just as talented. I have just as much skill. It may be our attitude. So I want to talk to you about pushing back wrong attitudes and letting right attitudes come forward, as Phil talked about here in this painting. And the good news is we have a standard. We have an example, and that is Jesus Christ. You wouldn't want me to be your example, I promise you. And I know a lot of you. I don't want you to be the example. Some of you look at me and say, yeah, you're right. We don't want you to be an example, but I'm pretty good. Now, I want you to turn, and I I think in the the top of your notes, I I put Philippians, but it's actually Ephesians chapter 2 I want to look at today. I'm I'm sorry, I think I put Ephesians. It's Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 